Historical photographs are like a portal into the past. Through them, we can see things we would never have believed otherwise. In this video, I offer you a glimpse at some of the rarest photographs that are valuable to scientists and historians. Enjoy watching. Harriet Cowell made a huge contribution to the development of medicine. This woman worked as a cleaner at Hahnemann Medical College in San Francisco. At the age of 35 in 1888, she died of tuberculosis and bequeathed her body to science. After that, Professor Rufus Weaver, an anatomy professor, got to work. For a long time, he painstakingly separated the nervous system from the body. This allowed him to obtain a model of the human nervous system, which he mounted on a stand. The teaching aid was supposed to be used for educating Weaver's students, but his work attracted enormous interest from other medical professors. Eventually, the model of the nervous system was transferred to the World's Columbian Exposition in 1893, where Weaver was awarded a medal and became the laureate of the Blue Ribbon Scientific Award. Images of the nervous system began to appear in textbooks, laboratories, and colleges, first in the U.S. and then beyond its borders. It's unknown why Harriet Cowell decided to donate her body to science, as previously the bodies of criminals were used for studying anatomy. However, her act helped make a significant leap in the development of anatomy. On November 22, 1963, the 35th President of the United States, John F. Kennedy, was assassinated. The police searched long and hard for witnesses among those present during the incident. They studied photos and noticed that many of them featured a woman in a scarf, resembling Russian grandmothers in appearance. Her face was almost always obscured by a camera, and her eyes were hidden behind sunglasses. The presence of a camera in her hands could have potentially helped the investigation find the killer. The unknown woman was nicknamed Lady Babushka. Flyers with her photograph were circulated everywhere. The police hoped to get some information about her, but the identity of this mysterious witness to the president's assassination was never established. In 1970, a woman claiming to be Beverly Oliver came to the police. She confessed that she was the Babushka. In her hands that day was a Yashica Super 8 camera, which had recorded the moment of the assassination, but FBI agents promptly confiscated her device. One would think the identity of the Babushka was established, but Beverly's confessions had many inconsistencies. First, that model of the camera wasn't manufactured in 1963, and secondly, the woman in the photo was around 40 years old, while Beverly was only 17 at that time. So who Lady Babushka really was and why she was recording the assassination remains unknown. The Codex Gigas is a massive handwritten book, likely created by one person in the 12th century. The book weighs 75 kilograms and measures 89 by 49 centimeters. It contains 310 parchment pages, each written in two columns of 106 lines. It is believed that the person who wrote the Codex Gigas took about 20 to 30 years to do so. However, an interesting and even mystical legend is associated with this manuscript, stating that it was written in just one night. The legend says that a certain Benedictine monk sinned and tried to repent in front of senior monks. The senior monks were unbending and told him that he would be walled into the monastery. The sinner then requested one night to write a gigantic work that would glorify their monastery for centuries. Intrigued, the senior monks allowed him to proceed. The monk knew he couldn't fulfill the promise, so he prayed to the devil for help. Satan did not deny him and even included his image on a separate sheet at the end of the book, like an autograph demonstrating his authorship. The devil's image still resides in this mysterious book. This photograph captures strange letters written by a woman named Emma Hawk, addressed to her husband. Looking at them, it seems she wrote the same word over and over again without any spaces, and that's indeed the case. All her letters contained the phrase, come to me. The text on the paper looked strange because the woman was ill. At the age of 30, she had a nervous breakdown and began to suffer from hallucinations. Emma's husband was concerned about her condition, so she was sent for treatment to a psychiatric hospital. She managed to recover to her previous state, but soon relapsed. This time, 
treatment did not help Emma. She was diagnosed with schizophrenia and spent many years confined within the walls of the hospital. She spent all her free time writing letters. However, she never sent them and never even asked to meet with her husband. Emma Hauck's letters are stored in the private collection of psychiatrist Hans Prinzhorn as an example of the creativity of the mentally ill. Schizophrenia is now not uncommon. People with this disorder suffer from hallucinations, delusions, and social dysfunction. Affected individuals often do not understand that something is wrong with them and frequently cannot distinguish between reality and hallucinations. This photograph captures a strange device, and without the photo, few would believe such an invention existed. In today's world, there is a lot of noise and gadgets that distract us from work. When you have access to incredible amounts of information, an endless feed of news, photographs, videos, and music, it becomes difficult to focus. Often, all of this distracts us from interacting with friends and loved ones, from daily tasks, and even from sleep. Mobile app developers try to solve this problem by creating various time management programs, but unfortunately, these don't always help. It turns out that in the 1920s, people already faced a similar problem and needed peace and quiet. Inventor and writer Hugo Gernsback created a special device that helped focus on reading and writing. The isolator was a large wooden helmet lined with felt. Two pieces of glass were placed where the eyes would be, and a partition near the mouth absorbed sound. To ensure that the person did not suffocate inside the helmet, oxygen was supplied through a tube from a tank. You'll agree that this device can be called the most whimsical invention of the 20th century. This photograph is quite unique. It features the most famous hermit of the 19th century, whom people called the Leather Man. This man traveled extensively throughout the New World and drew attention due to his peculiar appearance. He was dressed in coarse leather clothes that he had sewn himself. His entire outfit, consisting of a shirt, pants, jacket, scarf, bag, hat, and boots, weighed around 27 kilograms. Despite his intimidating appearance, the man was absolutely harmless. His command of the English language was very poor. He answered questions monosyllabically and used a lot of gestures. However, he spoke fluently in French. Furthermore, a French prayer book was found in his bag. Hence, people assumed he was originally from France. Residents of the towns who periodically encountered him on the street noticed that he always followed the same route. He walked about 600 kilometers annually between the Connecticut and Hudson Rivers. As soon as he reached a certain point, he would turn around and walk back the way he came. People got used to the unusual wanderer and even calculated the date of his next arrival. Women baked bread for him and offered tea, while men shared chewing tobacco with him. The leather man traveled the same road for 32 years. One day he disappeared and was soon found dead in one of the caves. The cause of death was oral cancer. The strange man was buried in the Sparta Cemetery in Ossining, New York. The tombstone bore the name Jules Bourglet. In 2011, it was decided to exhume his remains and move them to a new cemetery, but no traces of him were found inside the grave. There were only a few nails from the coffin. This eerie photograph with thousands of fallen charred trees illustrates the aftermath of the Tunguska meteorite impact. On the morning of June 17, 1908, an anomalous event occurred in the Krasnoyarsk territory. A fiery ball appeared in the sky, rapidly approaching the Earth. This was followed by a powerful explosion that was heard up to 1,000 kilometers away. According to some estimates, its power ranged from 10 to 40 megatons in TNT equivalent, comparable to the power of an average hydrogen bomb. As a result of the incident, a forest covering an area of over 2,000 square kilometers was felled. People across the northern hemisphere observed anomalous glows in the sky and strange silver clouds. At the moment of the explosion, Windows were shattered in houses within a radius of 200 kilometers from the incident site. Despite the scale of the disaster for more than 10 years, no one had sought to clarify the cause of the explosion. It wasn't until 1921 that the first expedition was dispatched to the meteorite's fall zone to search for its debris. However, after a year of research, no fragments of the celestial object were found. 
To this day, the mystery of this incident remains unsolved. Over 70 different hypotheses have been proposed to explain what happened, including the theory that this was not a meteorite at all, but a result of experiments by Nikola Tesla. However, none of them have been proven. Before your eyes is a composite sketch of the most mysterious maniac of the 20th century. From 1968 to 1969, the Zodiac committed seven confirmed armed attacks on people, during which five people were killed. After his second attack, he sent mysterious messages to newspapers. He called himself Zodiac. In each letter and at the crime scenes, he left a strange symbol resembling a Celtic cross. The maniac's letters contained details of the murders he committed, as well as warnings about upcoming crimes. Along with the letters, Zodiac attached cryptographic ciphers, which, according to him, hid his personal information. Some of these were decoded, while others remain unsolved to this day. The first cipher, consisting of 480 symbols was decrypted by two school teachers. Contrary to the maniac's promises, it contained no personal information. Instead, Zodiac spoke of his love for killing because he was collecting slaves to serve him in the afterlife. The second cipher, consisting of 340 symbols, was only decoded in 2020 by three code-breaking experts from the U.S. This message also contained no information about the maniac. In it, he said that he was not afraid of death, as he had collected enough slaves for himself. The identity of Zodiac has never been determined. He was clearly an intelligent but mentally ill individual. The composite sketch was based on the testimonies of surviving victims, but a similar person was never found. There were many suspects in this high-profile and mysterious case, but Zodiac remains at large. On the morning of October 3, 1955, the Joita yacht set sail from the port of Apia in western Samoa to the Tokelau Islands. However, the yacht never reached its final destination and was only found 37 days later, 1,000 km off its main course. The Joita was built in the early 1930s and was considered a luxury vessel, often hosting parties for Hollywood stars. During World War II, Joita was handed over to the U.S. Navy and began serving as a patrol vessel. After the war, the yacht was decommissioned and its owners changed frequently. In 1952, the Joita was bought by Professor Catherine Luomala of the University of Hawaii. She later gifted it to her friend Thomas Miller. Until 1955, Miller used the vessel to transport various goods. Then he decided to carry passengers and a substantial amount of cargo to the Tokelau Islands for good money. He was able to hire an entire crew with the advance payment he received. When the yacht set sail, there were 25 people on board. Unfortunately, Miller, dreaming of big money, neglected the vessel's maintenance. When the yacht was finally found, it was still sailing with a half-powered engine and had a significant list. Neither people nor cargo weighing four tons were found on board. The lifeboats were also missing. Presumably, people tried to escape, but none of the passengers were ever found. In the 19th century, steam boiler explosions were a common occurrence. The aftermath of such incidents looked quite strange, as seen in this photo. The first steam boiler explosion occurred in 1813. British engineer William Brunton decided to accelerate his train to a higher speed. To achieve this, he increased the steam pressure in the boiler, resulting in an explosion. After boiler explosions, the fire tubes from the front of the steam engines would be ejected. These tubes funneled heat from the furnace, converting water to steam. The scene of the aftermath appeared quite surreal, as if the train had fallen victim to an attack by a creature with metallic tentacles. Some inventions of past centuries looked not just unusual, but even frightening. The first photograph captures a girl in a swimming pool who looks as if she's a character from a horror movie. Such an unusual swimming mask was invented in 1928. Despite its terrifying appearance, according to its creators, it had a useful function. With its help, swimmers could protect their faces from the harmful effects of ultraviolet rays. The second photo invention looks no less creepy and resembles some kind of leather monster. In fact, it's one of the oldest wetsuits from the beginning of the 18th century, Old Gentleman. It was made 
made from cowhide and soaked in a mixture of pig fat and resin. The seams were sewn with waxed thread and filled with resin. The suit was completely waterproof. The diver literally climbed into the suit through an opening in the front. Air was supplied through wooden pipes with the help of a piston pump and was released through a smaller tube located on the back of the suit. Now this amazing invention is stored in the Finnish Museum of Rahe. Mickey Mouse is one of the most famous animated characters created by the Walt Disney Company. Everyone knows his name, and toys, clothes, accessories, and much more are made with his image. Mickey's birth date is considered to be the day of the first screening of the cartoon Steamboat Willie on November 18, 1928, although the mouse had already appeared in the cartoon Plain Crazy six months earlier. Many children eagerly awaited their first encounter with Mickey Mouse in the theater. They even prepared for the event by putting on mouse masks. This photograph captures that very moment. It must be said that the children in the masks look very creepy in the black and white snapshot, and this image could become a memorable poster for some horror movie. One can spend a long time admiring the Amber Room, located in the Catherine Palace, scrutinizing each element of this art masterpiece. However, what is currently on display for palace visitors is merely a replica. The original room is considered to be missing. The history of this greatest masterpiece began in the 18th century. The Prussian king, Frederick I, ordered a large chamber adorned with panels made from the finest amber, precious stones, and elegant friezes from German craftsmen. Peter I, during his visits to Prussia, was always fascinated by this marvel. After the death of the Prussian king, his son Frederick William I ascended to the throne and gifted the Amber Chamber to Peter. Peter I was delighted with the gift he had long dreamed of, but forgot about it, and the room's contents were stored for 25 years in the Ludwigsburg Chambers of the Summer Garden. It was only his daughter Elizabeth who remembered the masterpiece. At her command, the chamber was installed in the Winter Palace and then moved to Tsarskoye Selo. During World War II, the Nazis often engaged in the looting of art objects, and of course, they did not overlook the Amber Room. The stolen masterpiece was taken to Königsberg Castle, where it was stored until August 1944. After an attack by British aviation, the castle burned down. However, no traces of the Amber Room were found in its ruins. Since then, this wondrous work of art has been seen by no one, and never again. There are many theories about where the room could have disappeared to. According to some of them, the room was either burned or securely hidden. Captured in these photos is a bearded man with wild eyes, Grigory Rasputin. He is one of the most enigmatic figures in Russian history. Rasputin became a well-known individual after gaining the trust of the Romanov royal family. Before meeting the emperor, he portrayed himself as a holy man capable of healing and predicting the future. Despite this, Rasputin led a rather licentious lifestyle. Despite his repulsive appearance, he was popular among wealthy women who likely believed in his supernatural abilities. Over time, rumors about the healer reached the royal family. Nicholas II's only son, Alexei, suffered from hemophilia, and none of the doctors or faith healers could help him. Then the emperor's wife, Alexandra, decided to invite Rasputin. Surprisingly, the boy's condition genuinely improved in his presence. Historians still don't understand how the self-proclaimed healer managed to produce a positive effect. Seemingly, he used hypnosis. Rasputin could also predict the future. However, among all his tales, only the prediction of his own death and the death of the entire royal family turned out to be true. In a letter to the emperor, he wrote that he would not live to see January and that if Nicholas II was involved in his death, the entire royal family would be killed by the people. On the night of December 29, 1916, a group of nobles, including the emperor's cousin, killed Rasputin. Just over a year and a half later, in July 19. 18, Nicholas II was shot along with his wife Alexandra and their five children.
The next photograph looks, to put it mildly, unpleasant. It captures thousands of human teeth. But why would anyone need to collect them? Workers doing renovations on the second floor of a building from the year 1900 in Valdosta, Georgia, came across this unusual find. They discovered a large number of teeth in the wall. The workers took a picture of the find and sent it to a newspaper. After the publication of a short article with the photograph, local historians began their investigation. It turned out that on the first floor of the building there was a pharmacy, and on the second floor was a dental office run by Dr. Clarence Whittington. Everything seemed to fall into place, but it remains unclear why the dentist collected teeth from his patients. Moreover, human teeth were also found in the walls of other buildings in Valdosta and Carrollton. Perhaps in this strange way, dentists were disposing of patient teeth. Otherwise, why hide them in the walls? This photograph looks shocking to modern people, but it wouldn't surprise Egyptians in the last century. The photo captures a mummy vendor waiting idly for his next customer. At the beginning of the 20th century, the world learned about the mysterious mummies and artifacts of ancient Egypt. Tomb raiders began selling everything they could find, from architectural elements to mummified human remains. Wealthy people from all corners of the globe were willing to pay any amount of money to have a piece of Egyptian civilization in their collection. This led to the creation of a black market, where tomb raiders and resellers offered a variety of tomb artifacts. Mummies were ground into a supposedly medicinal remedy that was sold in many pharmacies, and they also decorated the homes of wealthy people. As a result, archaeologists lost the opportunity to study many important samples. Modern people can't imagine their lives without electricity. If you leave the planet without it, real chaos will begin. And who would have thought that people used to oppose the introduction of electricity? At the end of the 19th century, residents of some cities around the world saw strange structures connected by wires on their streets. These were the first power lines. Some people were skeptical about this technology. This poster was drawn in 1900 by fighters against electrification. There is a legend that its plot was real. In 1889, a lineman named John Fix was doing his work on one of the streets of Manhattan. Suddenly something happened, and the man was electrocuted. Fix died instantly, right before the eyes of frightened people. Undoubtedly, people were afraid of a convenient but seemingly very dangerous invention. However, over time, skeptics became fewer and fewer, and now people can't do without electricity. The man in the iron mask, was one of Louis XIV's prisoners. He was arrested in 1669 and remained in captivity for 34 years. The king ordered that the prisoner should never be seen by anyone. For this reason, he was securely guarded by the warden of the Pignerol prison, Benin d'Auvergne de Saint-Marc. For added secrecy, the prisoner wore a mask. Who he was and why he was arrested remains a mystery. He was imprisoned under the name Eustache Doge. This name was mentioned when the Minister of War, the Marquis de Louvois, sent a letter to Saint-Mars warning him of the arrival of an extremely dangerous prisoner. However, historians report that the name was written in a handwriting different from that of Louvois. The mysterious prisoner changed locations as Saint-Mars received promotions and became the warden of larger prisons than Pignerol. Ultimately, the man in the iron mask was moved to the Bastille. By the end of his term, the prisoner was rewarded for his calm demeanor with kind treatment. However, had he removed the mask, he would have been instantly killed. On November 19, 1703, the man in the iron mask passed away and all his belongings were burned along with him. Some historians have speculated that his identity and face were concealed because he might have been Louis XIV's brother possibly even his twin. Among people far removed from history, the mysterious prisoner became known after Alexandre Dumas described him in his novel The Vicomte of Bragelonne, ten years later. Later, Dumas dedicated a separate play to him called The Prisoner of the Bastille. Ronald McDonald is a mischievous red-haired clown, the mascot of the globally famous fast food chain McDonald's. Clowns are often associated with joy and childhood, but thanks to the horror industry, they have also come to evoke a certain fear. If you don't agree, I suggest you look at this photograph. It shows the first version of Ronald McDonald, created in 1963. He looks so frightening that even Pennywise from the horror film It could be envious. 
At that time, the clown Bozo was immensely popular, and it must be said, looked even worse than the first McDonald. The actor who played Bozo was Willard Scott, and he was the one who devised the image for McDonald's mascot. Instead of a nose, Ronald had the chain's signature cup protruding from his face. His hat was a food tray, hamburgers hung from his belt, and his makeup resembled the scarecrow from The Wizard of Oz. Today, such an image would hardly be understood, but back then it became incredibly popular. On one of the photo resources, a strange photograph was posted. The person who published it claimed to be a former employee of the U.S. Special Services, risking his own life to share one of the most classified images. According to him, the photograph was taken in the early 20th century and captures an American scientist shaking hands with a representative of an extraterrestrial civilization. The expression on his face suggests that the man is clearly familiar with the alien and their handshake symbolizes some sort of agreement. The author of the publication explained that contact with extraterrestrial beings has long been established, and all of the global progress of the 20th century is linked to this fact. The government and scientists are hiding this truth from ordinary people, primarily because it was one of the conditions for cooperation with extraterrestrials. The photograph was met with criticism from users, which the author expected, leaving a comment with the words, I've provided you with proof you didn't believe. He deleted the photo from the resource. And that's all from me. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to rate it, subscribe to the channel, and hit the bell icon. Your activity is the best reward for me. Thank you for your attention. See you soon. Bye.